Good day, students. Uh, welcome to the AP Calculus AB exam review for 2005. We're going to be going over problem one, and this uh, tests um, your understanding of areas of uh, regions bounded by two curves and volumes of solids. Um, on so before we get started, let's take a look at um, some formulas that are going to be guiding our problem solving process. So start to it, title it formulas. All right, first one has to do with <clears throat> area. So the area formula is basically the integral from A to B of the function on the top, let's call it F, minus the function on the bottom, let's call it G. It could be the function to the right or the function to the left, all right? How do we know the orientation? Well, dx basically indicates a top-down orientation, function on the top minus a function on the bottom. In this case, um, the slice, um, the, the cross-sectional area of the rectangular region is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Or dy, dy is a situation where you're looking at a function to the right minus a function to the left. Like in that case, your cross-section, your um, rectangular region will be pointing to the y-axis. Okay? With this orientation, G is less than F, okay? Either G is to the bottom of F or G is to the left of F. Now, volume is a little bit more um, intricate. Let's take a look at the formula for volume. So volume um, is the integral from is pi times the integral from A to B of the outer radius, big R square, minus the inner radius r square okay that gives us the area of the washer and then when we integrate from a to b we can find the volume um, dx is when your um, radius is perpendicular to the x-axis or pointing to the x-axis and then the y is when your radius is perpendicular or points to the y-axis now there are two cases, two scenarios here, depending on the orientation of your um, axis of rotation. So let's take a look at the two cases. The first one, pi times the integral from A to B. If you're looking at a top-down orientation where, top-down or left part, if the axis of rotation is less than the two functions, we're going to have um, the function on the top or to the right minus your axis of rotation square. This is big R square. Pi R square will help you find the area of the outer of the bigger disk. Minus G minus A square. This is little R square. So pi times that square will give you the area of the inner disk. And then when you subtract these two areas, you get the area of the washer. Okay. So um, the X, if your radius is perpendicular to the X axis, or dy if your radius is perpendicular to the y-axis, all right? So this situation is applicable when a is smaller than both functions. Either it's at the bottom of g and f or it's to the left of g and f, okay? And then the other situation we have is pi times the integral from a to b of a minus F, this is big R. The difference here is um, A is above, is bigger than both of the two functions. Okay, so A minus F square will give you the outer radius minus A minus G square will give you the inner radius. DX, if your slice is perpendicular to the x-axis or your radius is perpendicular to the x-axis. Or DY, if your slice is perpendicular to the y-axis. This orientation is applicable when f is less than g and g is less than a. It's like a reversal of the order here, okay? I always like to put f at the end and then put g in the middle and then um, a at the other end. So this formula is applicable to um, revolution, solids um, generated as a result of revolution. Now, how about the volume of solids with known cross-sectional area? That's um, very straightforward. That one, the volume is simply going to be the integral from A to B of the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area. 
it could be a of um it could be a of x or a of y dependent so is the x if the base is perpendicular to the x-axis or the y if the base of the area is perpendicular to the y-axis so that's this is for um, cross-sectional area let's put that note there cross section the only hard part with this last uh, formula is finding the area of the cross-sectional area because you have to make use of your geometry formulas to find the area all right so let's take a look at um, the a part of question one it says let f and g be functions given by f of x equals 1 over 4 sine pi x and g of x equals 4 to the negative x. Let r be the shaded region in the first quadrant enclosed by the y-axis and the graphs of f and g. And let s be the shaded region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of f and g as shown um, in the figure above. Uh, the a part, we have to find the area of um, region R. All right, first thing we're going to do, uh, let's write down the formula that we're going to be using that's going to guide our problem solving process. So um, the formula for area um, is equal to the integral from A to B of um, F minus G now, is this going to be dx or dy? Uh, if we're looking for the area of region R, we're just looking for this area right here, this area. Now, what is the optimal way to um, find the area? Should we slice in the direction of the y-axis to get our, um, our rectangles, or should we slice in the direction of the x-axis? So the question you want to ask yourself is, which um, approach gives you only one function on the top or right? and one function on the bottom or left. All right, so if we sliced in the direction of the x-axis, let's say these were our, I mean, the direction of the y-axis, let's say these were our slices here, our um, rectangle that we're going to integrate um, to find the total area here. Um, you notice that in this area, we have f of x on the top and the line x equals 0 on the bottom. And in this other area region right here, we have g of x on the top and x equals 0 on the bottom. So if we wanted to set up an integral, we have to use two um, integral expressions, one for the area where g is on top and uh, x equals 0 is on the bottom, and then another one for here where f is on top to the right and uh, x equals 0 is on the bottom. So that's a little bit complicated. Now, how about we slice in the other direction? If we slice in the direction of the x-axis, all right, where our rectangles are perpendicular to the x-axis, what do you notice? You notice that you have g on top, that's the only function on top, and f on the bottom for the entire domain of integrate, interval of integration, all right? So we're going to use dx. We're going to go in the dx direction. So this is going to be um, dx because uh, we're going, we're going to, in the direction of the x-axis. All right, now this means that all functions are going to be in terms of x, and our limits of integration will be x, okay? So we know that um, here, at a starting point, we know what x is there, x is 0. So here, x is 0. Um, x is equal mm -hmm. to 0. Now I need the x-coordinates here and also the x coordinate here. So let's go ahead and find out what the points of intersection um, of these two, uh, the, the coordinates of these two points of intersection are. All right, I'm gonna be making use of a TI-89 titanium. That's the best calculator that you can use for the AP exam. So let's go to the Y window, enter the first function, uh, one divided by four plus, um, sine pi x, sine pi x, um, enter, and then the second function is 4 raised to the negative x, enter. All right, so let's go ahead and graph our functions. So we have um, lemon f3. 
So I'm going to do this pretty quickly. My assumption here is that you already know how to use your graphing calculators. All right, so there goes the um, f of x in the exponential function. There you have it. So we want, we want to just focus our attention on this area. We want to calculate the coordinates of these two intersections. So it's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I, I need to zoom in here. So I'm going to use a zoom box, OK? The beauty of the zoom box is you can set the edges of the box in such a way that it captures the area that you really care about. OK, so the upper left corner, I'm going to put it somewhere there, right there. Enter, and then the lower right corner, I want to make sure I capture this entire region right here because the only region I care about is this region. OK, so with the zoom box, it's going to just zoom into this region right here. Press Enter. Okay. So what you see is the graph um, being graphed in such a way that it focuses on the key areas that we care about. So, all right, there goes the two functions. So I just need this, the coordinates of this intersection and uh, the coordinates of this intersection. Um, hopefully you already know how to do that. I'm going to just show you how to do one and then you can apply the same procedure to the other point. All right, so for the first point, this one right here, just hit F5 and then look for intersection, five. First curve, enter, second curve, enter, lower bound, just pick a point to the left of the, um, of the point of intersection, I'm going to use zero. So you see the arrow pointing to the right and then upper bound, just go to the right of the point of intersection, enter. Well, there goes your point of intersection right there. Let's go ahead and write it down. The point, this, uh, the coordinates of this point of intersection is point one seven eight two one eight for the x, and then for the y is um, point seven eight one zero nine two. Now for the uh, other second point of intersection, if you apply the same procedure, you're going to get one and point two five. Okay, so there goes your points of intersection. Now we are looking for the area of region R, okay, this region right here, region R. Now, this is a problem where if you're blindly applying the formula without understanding what you're doing, you're going to get the problem totally wrong, okay? So remember, in this setup right here, it requires that G be less than F. In this formula, F is a function on the top or to the right, and G is a function on the bottom or to the left. Going in an up-down fashion, F is on top, G is on the bottom. In this problem, we have a reversal. In this problem, G is on top here, and F is on the bottom here. Okay? So what do we do? Now, anytime you're in a situation where the problem is set up in a way, is mixed use of notations that conflict with your formula, you can simply adjust the problem in such a way that the confusion is eliminated. Okay? So what can we do here? So instead of calling this f and g, how about we call it their actual value? So let's call this, this function right here is 1 over 4 plus sine pi x. Okay? So we don't get confusing. And this function right here is, the g function is 4 to the negative x. So making use of these actual our values would prevent us from getting confused and getting the problem wrong, okay? Now, since we're going from zero to this point right here, um, our limits of integration are going to be, so now let's apply the formula to the situation. Um, it's going to be the integral from zero all the way to 0.17821. Times now f is a function on the top. In that interval, which function is on the top? Is it the exponential function or the trig function? Clearly, the exponential function is on the top here. So that this would be our f. Our f is going to be four to the negative x for this interval, and this will be our g. And then our g is going to be one over four plus sine pi x. If we just apply our formula to what we're given here, we'll get it backwards and it will be wrong, okay? So um, as a result of this, our 
answer is going to be um, f, which is 4, to the negative x, minus, this is a top function, the bottom function, do not forget your parentheses, 1 over 4 plus sine pi x, this is the g, okay, dx. And this is the value of the expression for our, the area of region R. So you just plug that into the calculator and, and you should get your answer. Now, let me give you a visualization, um, show you an animation of what we are actually computing here. So there goes our two functions right here. This is region R, that's what we're looking for. So um, what we're doing is using um, vertical rectangles perpendicular to the x-axis and calculating the infinite sum of those rectangles from zero to that point right there. So if we do that, there goes the setup right here, the function on the top, 4 to the negative x minus the function on the bottom, okay, um, which is 1 over 4 plus sine pi x. We're going from zero all the way to the x coordinate of our point of intersection, which we determined earlier. And then we're going to get, if you plug this into your calculator, hopefully you know how to do that, you get 0 0.065 square units, okay? So this is the area of region R. All right, now let's uh, take a look at the question B. We're now to find the area of region S, okay? The cool thing about region S is if we applied the, our formula directly here, we shouldn't have any problems because f is a function on the top. The f that is in our formula is consistent with the f here as to what's on top. And then the g in our formula is consistent to what's here as a function on the bottom. So if we just blindly apply our formula without really understanding it for region s, we will not have any problems, okay? We can clearly see that the optimal orientation here is up down because if it went side to side, it would be really, really complicated. It will make absolutely no sense because um, we'll have to split up this function right here and it will be a complete disaster. So um, the orientation we're going to use is the top-down orientation. We're going to use um, vertical triangles, triangles that are perpendicular to the um, x-axis, okay? So since we're going in the direction of the x-axis, that means all our variables are going to be x's, no y's here. So with that said, we know exactly what formula to use. The formula we're going to use is the area formula similar to the fir first part, part A, is the integral from A to B. These are going to be x equals A, x equals B, times F minus G dx, because we're going in the direction of the x-axis. Okay? All right. Um, so our limits of integration will be this x value all the way to this x value right here and then um, this is going to be our f and this will be our g for this uh, region okay so let's go ahead and uh, set it up we're going to have the integral um, from what was it again point one seven eight two one eight all the way to one that times f is the trig function, which is 1 over 4 plus sine pi x um, minus g, which is 4 to the negative x, dx. Okay? So we just simply plug that into a calculator, and that should give us um, what the area is. So let's take a look at a visualization um, as to what we are computing here. So this is the second region right here, region um, S. So we're looking for that area. So you see how we're slicing it perpendicular to the x-axis. And we're looking for the infinite sum of those um, infinitely narrow uh, rectangles, okay? So if we go ahead and calculate the accumulation of the areas of those tiny rectangles, going from 0.178 um, to 18 all the way to 1, the function on the top, as we discussed earlier, is a trig function. And the function on the bottom is the exponential function. And then if you do the setup, you plug it into your calculator, you get 0.41 square units, all right? So that's that. 
All right, now let's work on the C part. It says find the volume of the solid generated when S is revolved about the horizontal line, Y equals negative one. So where is that line located? Um, it's a horizontal line. Um, so we're gonna be rotating in the direction of the X axis since our axis of rotation is horizontal. So the line Y equals negative one is underneath both of the functions for region S. Okay, we just revolve in this region around the axis of rotation. So since um, our axis of rotation is underneath both functions, and we're going up and down, then we know what formula to use, okay? So let's go ahead and write down the formula that we're gonna be using. We know the standard formula for volume is uh, pi times the integral from A to B of the outer radius square minus the inner radius square. Dx in this case, since we're going in the direction of the x axis. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, be more specific with our formula. So since <clears throat> A is underneath both functions, this formula is gonna basically be pi times the integral uh, from A to B. The outer radius can be determined by computing F minus A, okay? Um, A is the axis of rotation squared. This is the outer radius minus G minus a, this is the inner radius square, dx, since we're going in the direction of the x-axis. And this is applicable only when a is less than g and g is less than f. Okay, so that's the formula, as we discussed earlier. So let's go ahead and apply this formula to this situation that we're dealing with. Since everything is in terms of x, we shouldn't have any problems. So the volume is going to be pi times the integral from um, the x-coordinate of the um, lower bound, the point of intersection to the left of region S is point one seven eight two one eight, and then the upper bound is simply 1. That times um, f is, f is still the same f, the function on the top for region S, just like we did in part C. So f is a function on the top which is a trig function. So F is a function on the top, which is one over four plus sine pi X. That function minus the axis of rotation, which is X equals, um, Y equals uh, negative one. So n minus negative one, like that. We can just multiply it together to give you plus one if you, if you want, that's, that's fine also. So this square, this is the outer radius. The outer radius is the function minus the axis of rotation. Now that one minus G, G is our, um, what is G? G is our function on the bottom, okay? Which is the exponential function four to the negative X minus our axis of rotation, negative one. So this is our inner radius. Okay, this quantity square, and then you have that dx, okay? So this is by simply applying our formula. Now let me use the whole idea of composite radii to really help you understand how this expression came about, okay? So if we think about it, we have a region like this. Let me, draw, let me sketch it again, so. So I just take a snapshot of, of the region. So um, what we have here is we have a, a composite radius. Let's say um, this is our axis of rotation somewhere down here. That's our A, okay? Let's call that A. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just explaining this in a different way. So we, are, we have our radius going from the, top of the upper function to the function in the middle all the way to our axis of rotation, okay? So there are three points here. We have the function on the top, let's call that F. We have the function in the middle, let's call that G. And then we have our axis of rotation A. And now we're going measuring from the top to the bottom, okay? So let's um, extract our composite radius, radius, um, put it on the side right here. 
And then let's label the points. So we have F on top, F, and then we have G somewhere in the center. Let me label it on the other side. <clears throat> so let's call this F. This is F. And then call this G. And then this is A, our axis of rotation. Okay. Now um, we are measuring from the top to the bottom. First measurement is from the top all the way to the bottom. If you're measuring from the top to the bottom, that will give us the outer radius of our of our um, washer. Okay. So how long is that measuring from F all the way to G? This measurement right here is the outer radius R, and it's determined by F, the function on the top, minus the axis of rotation A. So that's how we have this F minus A here. And then, of course, you want to square it to find the area of the circle and multiply that by pi. The next radius you want to find is the uh, inner radius. You're going to go from G to your axis of rotation, OK? So from there to there, this is the inner radius, little r. So the inner radius, little r, how do you calculate it? You go from the top function in the middle to the bottom, top down, which is g minus a. Okay, so there goes the inner radius. That's why we have g minus a here for the inner radius. And then if you subtract the top from the bottom, you're going to have your nice little washer, and then you integrate between these limits to find the, the, uh, vo the volume. All right? So let's, let me give you a visualization of this uh, problem so you can really understand what's going on here and also see what the final answer is. All right, so what we're doing is basically um, taking this region right here, that's region S, and then uh, we have an axis of rotation and we're rotating that region around um, that axis of rotation, okay? So you can see that that's, um, radius we're trying to calculate by cal computing big R minus little r. So that gives us that radius right there and then we rotate it, okay? So that's the result in solid. Now let's go ahead and uh, determine what the value of the um, result is. So when we have that washer and we integrate it from this point 0.178 to 18 all the way to one, and then we do the function on the top, which is your trig function minus the axis of rotation, big R square, minus the function on the in the middle or on the bottom, minus the axis of rotation, that's little r square. And then you find the value of this integral, you get 4.559. Okay, so you simply plug this expression into your calculator in order to determine your final results. Okay, so that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool clips such as this. And please post a comment to let us know what we, you think about this clip. More clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com under AP Calculus. Thanks again for watching.